taken care of, where they will be protected by God. This for us, a servant of a God who is alive, is very gratifying to us because it removes, in part, many concerns. Because we know that Isabella, together with the parents, are going to be here in the Sundays in the morning, bring Isabella to learn the things that the teachings from the Lord is a commitment that they have made with the Lord and us, with the church, that we're taking to give a support to this family and everything that they need, spiritually speaking. Because when Isabella is, has grown up, she will never forget of the experiences that she and her family have lived in the presence of the Lord. This was the experience of David here. David was a youth. He took care of sheep. He was a shepherd. And at this moment, Israel lived a struggle, a war. The armies, they have been camped, waiting for the first act of, so that there will be a counter act. But no, uh, no one had the courage to face Goliath. Goliath was a giant. Philistine is more or less three meters, about nine feet, nine feet tall, more or less. Can you imagine when? Can you imagine Wayne, this big dude here? Imagine a person th four feet taller than Wayne. Can, how can you face a man like that? I'm already afraid of coming close to Wayne because of his size. Julia is also there. Julia there. Imagine, he was a warrior, prepared for the battle. He, David was a shepherd. He had no preparation and training in battles with weapons. He took care of sheep. The Bible describes David as a young man, a, a skinny, simple, a simple man. He had no aggressiveness. His, his siblings were different. They had been taught in, a, in battle. But no David. David was with his parents still. But the word says that upon David rested the Holy Spirit of God. Upon David rested the Holy Spirit of God. The Spirit had control over David's life. And David was a spirit man. A spiritual man, he was a bold man, valiant man. And now, when he's uh, by a request of his father, go to meet with his siblings to gather news. Joshua said, "Go there. It's been a while since I have gotten news. Go and speak with your siblings." David left his sheep behind, took a couple of uh, a few. Um, articles of food to his siblings, and when David comes close to the camp of the Israelites, everybody was afraid because Goliath was there confronting. He wanted to have a combat uh, with another person, one-on-one. -on -one. He was saying, give a man to fight with me. The, the winner will win the whole thing. And Goliath was there confronting. But no one had courage to face Goliath, afraid. And the army of Israel was a, a well-prepared army, valiant man, also well-trained. They had already gone through other battles. But on this one, there was this great man, this Goliath, was a person that was very well-prepared that caused great fear to the soldiers of Israel. And when David arrives, he hears this situation, and he makes himself uh, available to fight, was willing to fight. He was thinking, why no one goes there? Why no one faces that man? That's absurd. We cannot allow this. 
David, a shepherd, can you imagine now? A shepherd coming to a, a war camp, now wanting to show to the soldiers that they needed to fight Goliath. And now David makes himself available and then he goes to fight with Goliath. And we all know the end of this battle, the story of David and Goliath. David takes a, a sling, throws to the forehead of the Goliath. Goliath falls to the ground. And as we read here, is the moment, exact moment in which David comes back from this battle with a trophy on his hands. Now he goes and he presents himself to the king. And it is interesting that there was a curiousness from King Saul. When he saw this, when he finds out that David wanted to battle against Goliath, he was scared. What, uh, oh God, it's going to be horrible. And he tried to discourage David. Uh, take, take my uh, armor, maybe. Uh, take my weapons. And David said, no, I'm going to go with what I have. And Saul was in agony, much more worried. Because in that battle, the result would influence and who was going to win that battle. If Goliath won, the arm of Israel would be forever slaves to the Philistine and vice versa. But now David, when he comes back, Saul, he wants to know one thing. Who is the father of that son, uh, of that child, that young man? Who is the father of David? Because Saul, Saul knew that a structured home, a home that is structured in the Lord. Saul had intimacy with God. Saul has been chosen by God. He knew God. He knew the God of Israel. And now Saul knew that with a family that is structured in God, a family that is as suggested in the in the Lord, it would be a victorious family. It would be a family that had valiant men. And he wanted to know who was the father of David. And the, David says, I'm the son of Jesse. The Bet Bethlehem Bethlehemite. Who, what led David to face Goliath? Was his faith, his experience with God? And David speaks of, of the Lord. And he says in, that in a battlefield, the Lord of war was the Lord of Israel. David knew that in a battlefield, God, the King of Israel, was the Lord of war and the Lord of the armies. What caused David to go to Goliath was his commitment with God, was his experience with God. He was trust in the Lord. And that's what causes us tonight to say this, that our children, their, tr their trust must be on the Lord and in nothing else. Isabella, there are, are going to come moments in which no one is going to tell her, you cannot face this, you cannot face that. No one will be able to tell that to her. David was here. Nobody was able to prevent David. Not even his father, if, if he was there. Not even King Saul was able to prevent him. Why? Because David knew that his victory was in God's hands. And David went there in haste because the name of the Lord needed to be honored. The name of the Lord needed to be kept. And today, our children as well, they faced many giants. Our children, they faced battles every day. It's a world that rises up against the moral values, against the biblical principles, and our children need to uh, recognize what is right and what is of the Lord, or what is the will of the Lord for their lives. Imagine Roberto and Bruno, if tomorrow Isabella decides to face and 
goes out of her, her home to go to college or to work. You can imagine the concern that was going to come to their hearts. That's natural of every parent. That's natural. But if Isabella is walking in the path of the Lord, if Isabella from her young age is brought to have her own experience with the Lord, if she's taught in the path of the Lord how to pray, how to fast, how to hear the voice of the Lord, how to heed to the voice of the Lord, she will be victorious in every battle that she faces because she's not going to be alone. Her strength is not going to be on the human knowledge or professional knowledge, but her strength is going to come from the Lord because she will trust in the Lord. And David comes with the trophy. He brings on his hand a trophy and that speaks exactly of what? Of um, dominion over the world, dominion over evil. The servant of God, when he is in the Lord, he will not be governed by the enemy. He's not going to be dominated by the world. He's not going to be involved. That's why he comes with a trophy in his hands to show that he is victorious. To show that the Lord is with him. To show to everyone that the choice that he made, that our children make in the Lord, is the better option. That's why tonight we are here with joy to be able to introduce Isabella to the Lord, to give her to the care of the Lord. That's why the parents of Roberto Luna come here tonight to ask this great blessing. Ask God, take care of my daughter. Lord, Isabella, you have given us as an inheritance and she belongs to you. And that's what we as a church are going to do. Pray with her and conduct her on the path of the Lord. Let us sing a song and invite the church to stand up. Invite Bruna to be here in the front with our brother Roberto.
Olha, olha, olha. Isso. Let's close our eyes. Amen. Lord God, we plead the power that is in the blood of Jesus. We ask a blessing, Lord, for your daughter, Isabella. We ask, Lord, that you may, at this moment, be looking towards her with your eyes of mercy and the grace of the Lord, the anointing of the Lord. The mercy of the Lord may rest upon Isabella and that she may be able to be led by the, your Holy Spirit to have many experiences with you and so that she may grow according to your will and that she may give heed to your voice and that whatever she learns in her house, Lord, may put, she may be able to put in practice in her life and she may be able to choose the better person and that she may be able to choose to walk on your path, Lord. I also ask a blessing of health and protection and that she may be protected uh, from any evil teaching, every teaching from the world, everything, Lord, that has been prepared, Lord, to still kill and destroy the life of Isa the little Isabella. But we trust in the Lord. That's why tonight, Lord, we introduce before you, Lord, so that you may protect her, take care of her, and guide her to live in your presence, and so that she may be a blessing whatever she walks, at home, at, on the road, in the house of their grandparents, here in the church, Lord. She, may she be a vessel uh, used by your hands. Is the prayer that we say in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Very well. She behaved very well, 100%. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to have a... Amém, glória a Jesus. Your joy has been put out upon your church. We exalt you, Lord. Because this day is a day of feast in your presence. Our hope desires to be in your house. Bless be your name, Lord. We praise you for the joy that we feel in your heart to be before you. Amém, Senhor. Amém, amém. Podem voltar? Voltar o... Tá?
receive Lord of our service and adoration to your name. Each prayer that has been made here, Lord, we ask that you in the proper time answer them for the honor and glory of your holy name. And that you may be working our hearts, causing us to be able to wait on you, Lord, and trust in the action of the Holy Spirit. Take us home in peace so that we may have a night of rest in your presence. I pray that we say in the name of Jesus. And in your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be put out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may sit down. If anyone desire uh, prayer still have a few minutes before our meeting, we are here at your disposal to pray to anyone that want. I'd like to remind that Saturday at 6 o'clock in the morning we are going to be here once again praying to the Lord. It's early dawn with the youth, right? Let's see how many uh, valiant ones are going to be here. I can count here 10. If there are going to be 11, it will be great. Amen. I'm going to say, I want to say the peace of the Lord to everyone.